Uh, they set the standards and then uh, all the other manufacturers come out. There's a toolbox here. There's my toolbox. To be here. Okay, this hasn't moved. The water to go from the boiler to the system. And you can see how dirty this is. The map. So we've done the job now, guys. A bit rushed on the ending. Assalamu alaikum guys, good day to the farmers and hello to everybody else. Today, in this video, uh, we're going to be fitting a Baxi 825 combi and we're also going to be power flushing the system. Let me show you guys the job. So we're taking out this old Vakira. Now, I know you guys don't like Vakiras, a lot of people don't, but you know, this one has been going for about 25 years. So it shows you they're not as bad as they, as they claim, claim to be. I think it was these first that came out, it was Vakiras and Valence. Uh, they set the standards and then uh, all the other manufacturers come out, from what I believe. Um, the pipe work is all uh, mishmash at the bottom here. So at the bottom here, let's try figuring it out what it is before you get started. I believe we've got our flow, we've got our return, we've got our gas, and the filling loop is on here, so that's the cold, and then that's going to be the hot. So before I start, I'm just going to label them all up so I know what pipe's what. The flow returns, it makes no difference on this one uh, if I switch and swap them because the TRVs, I believe, are bi direction. So we're going to do that. The gas is in 15 mil, but from downstairs, it literally goes to about here until under the bath, actually, which is just on the other side of the wall. And then it reduces down to 15 and it goes across here to, to 15. And the customer doesn't want me to remove the bath panel if I can help it. Let me show you it to you. So this is the bath panel, it doesn't want me to remove it if uh, I can't help it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pipe the whole boiler up with the 15mm in situ, do my inlet and my gas rate, if it's fine I'll leave it, if not then I'll change that. So that's one issue that we've got there with the install, also the condense going through the wall, it's overflow, so we've got to upgrade that one out there. Let's go have a look outside, see if we've got any other issues. So we're outside now. There's another issue that we have there. The, the flue pipe is actually too close to the stack. Yeah, I believe it's got to be 150 mil away from the stack, but it's also got to be 300 mil away from the window. So I'll see if I can move either the stack further along, if I can cut it down, um, go lower and move it along, or if I can just um, move the flue to the side, basically towards there. Uh, the condense, like I said, just going to basically upgrade that and put that directly into the stack here, into 32. And then uh, from out here, that should be fine. Curtis, mate, getting the customer to have from that. <laughs> Take the ladders through. He's a pretty strong lad, isn't he? He's a strong lad, he is. So the tools that we're going to need, let's have a look how it looks outside. So we've got our Curtis's toolbox here. Here's my toolbox. I prefer this one, this open tote one. If you watch my day in the life video, I'll tell you about this PB bag and what I like about it, what I don't like about it. That was my bag, but now I've changed it to this one. But anyway, there's the boiler, the Baxi 825. Here's the, the flu. He hasn't pulled out the Magna Cleanse. Um, box yet and then here's the other stuff that i've got 15 22 screws flu wait i don't oh yeah we're going to need this for the core drilling and this is where i keep all my power tools in guys these uh, magnum boxes but anyway here's all the stuff probably need a bit more after but this is all right so before we start we always protect the property as best as we can so to make most out of the space we're going to move this out of the way clear this area here so i can put the toolboxes down here and uh, whack a dust sheet all the way down here. So it's all protected now. 
I like to put this sheet down first, blue mats on after, just to give it a bit extra protection. Um, and then now let's go do a tightness test. I need flat head. Then I need grips for the drain off, which I've got in my pocket there. So that's fine. And here's my pencil. Stopcock boxed in, so you can never get to it, but at least you can turn it off nice and easy. Yeah, it's really easy. It's off. Let's test it. Water's off. Sorted. Let's connect the drain off. So we can start draining the system down. Okay, let's do. Look how tiny this is to get into it. Let's do the tightness test. Uh, handles downwards, that's an issue we've got there. It's down to one instead of up. So it's falling to one. So you see, yeah, it's falling to one. It should be the other way around. So I'll have to sort that out. National grid. So, anyway, let's get my flathead. I don't usually use this, I usually use the cane, but the cane's been flooded. So I've had to send it back to cane. Just waiting for them to give it back to me. Let's put the manometer up here. I've got a really extra long hose. When you've got an extra long hose, make sure this doesn't kink anywhere. Yeah? Oh, after all that, figure out he's got a light in here. Great. So anyway, let's sort this out. Let's do my let by first. Let's check my let by first. Now, boys, done. Let's do stabilization. Come back after a minute. Tightness. Let's put it on 20. Oh. Okay, so while that's doing, I'll show you the rads that we're going to be flushing. So, uh, I've already checked the system. It's not too dirty, so the magnet clean should be alright to clean these. Um, so, yeah, so we've got a rad here. Another rad there, which obviously all this is going to have to be moved. Then we've got rads up here, one up here. Let's start venting the system. Vent that one. Vent that one. Make sure they're all fully open. Snooker table, nice. And then, so it's quite a small system. No rad in here. Two rads upstairs, about two downstairs, I think. Sorry, four rads, yeah. Oh, nice. Get your bum warm. Just to help get a bit of air out of this, or to make this boiler just that little bit lighter. Let's take this off. Release some air from here. You hear that, yes? This air is being released from here. If I want to take all the water out, then sometimes I do actually recharge the vessel. I know it's a bit too much, but it just makes it lighter, makes the boiler lighter, so it's got no water in it when you carry it downstairs. So that's one tip, guys. If you guys want to uh, move boilers around the house and get all the water out of it, um, just recharge the vessel, get your little pump on here, start recharging that while you're draining down, and that'll be a lot lighter, because most of the water is actually in the vessel. All right, so... Let's check up on here. Well, so it hasn't moved on the stabilization. Tightness. Still all right there. So long as it's about 20 millibar, it stays around there, it's fine. 
But also test these hoses to make sure it's not leaking and stuff like that before you do it. Power for the boiler. He's on a plug, nice and easy. Just pull that out so that's sorted. So I've now, harness test is done downstairs. There's no drop whatsoever. So you can then do the gas. The water's off. Yeah. Hello, Carlos. <laughs> nice. This is what we like to see. So now we're trying to get over this 150 away from the flu. Still need that it's a little bit higher, Curtis, so as long as it supports the, the ridge. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's fine, isn't it? You can go sideways. So you, just, just trying to remember, oh, you can tell, because it's going to be where them screws are. You're going to cut it where them screws are. See them screws? They're lower. There, isn't it? You're going to cut it where them screws are. So if you cut it where them screws are, then the flu will be fine. We'll, 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 have, we'll have that 150 clearance from it. And we'll be fine with that. So the labels for the boiler are actually underneath, at the back of the boiler. You can see, there's an arrow there going back out. That's telling you that's the return. This is the flow. You can see it there. You got the gas. You got water going. That one, and you got water going in there. Flow. Return. And gas is coming up here. gas and then that's cold and that's hot so whenever I work now I've done like the dirty work as you can see I always like to clean this area up best as I can system water it's filthy. You can see that like the black under there, yeah. So it does need a good flush. Boilers in the back of the van. Curtis will strip that. So I always keep the boilers. Um, I get Curtis to strip it. So when I haven't got no work or something like that, I get him to strip it. It's good for him to figure out where the parts are in these boilers, um, figure out names, components, and stripping them. Also, I make a bit of money out of it as well. I know Scrap Man wants it, but I make use out of it. I used to scrap them. I used to just let the Scrap Man take them. But now I keep them. So if you guys are looking for your apprentice when you've got time off and things to do, get them to strip the boiler. And the only things I keep, to be fair, is uh, brass and copper and maybe some heat exchangers. The rest, I'll get my scrap man to take while it's empty. So I've got my dustpan and brush for cleaning up. And then I also have bought these bags. Now these bags are like bin liner bags. They're about 50, I don't know, maybe a pound, or two, three pounds. Oh, come on. And on every job, I'll always pull one of these out. This is my rubbish bag, basically. This is what I put all my rubbish in. Nice and clean now. No shit on the floor and um, dry so now i'm ready to put my bracket on flu hold bracket let's show you what curtis has done outside so curtis has managed to took, take the stack off he's cut it lower now so we should have that clearance down there and he's put the bracket down there not sure if you can see it there he is down there hard working guy mate Check the angle out there. Angle of the dangle. Angle of the dangle. 
<laughs> now you see this cardboard here you guys can use this as a box yeah so you can make a box throw your crap in there i normally do that on bigger jobs we have conversions and stuff like that throw my crap in there and get rid of it but now what i do is or sometimes i use it as um, like a dust sheet or something so i put it on the floor there just to protect the floor but what i'm going to do with it now is just get rid of it just burn it when i get home Think I need to fit the boiler now is in this box. Took it all out as packaging, screws, filling loops done. They're the washers for the filling loops. Some people say they have issues with these leaking. I've never had an issue, mate, to be fair. Um the valves, the magma clean. These little valves, I just keep these to be fair. And then uh, yeah, condense, stuff like that. Bracket, shebang. Foil is now being hung. We've ripped the front cover off. Um, so for some reason, they've started to put these condensers on the boiler. Don't know why. I presume maybe because it's got water in it. Yep, a little bit. So yeah, get these plumb tubs, yeah? And they're quite good for catching water. Because you'll always have water in these boilers. That's why I like these boilers. Cause they've always got water in it. They've always tested, yeah? I've fitted a few other brands out there. Uh, I think Feroli and uh, believe it or not, it didn't work. You know, after a hard day's graft, I think it was a conversion actually. So hard, a couple of days graft, you go to fire the boiler up and you're gonna get, you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna get paid now at the end of it. The boiler didn't work. So after that, I've stopped fitting them. I'm not saying they're crap boilers, it's just that it, was, it wasn't that good. But as you can see, look, the water's flowing out of here. Plum tubs caught it. I like to work clean, guys. Yeah, I'm not saying really clean, but I like to work clean. I don't like it all wet and stuff like that. So uh, that's done. How did this get so messy? Well, it must have been when I was pilot drilling. I was drilling them holes at the top there. So that's done. PRV. Let's pull this one out as well. So got rid of them in a handy box. That's all done. That's sorted. So what I'm going to do now, I like to get the holes out of the way. So any holes that I'm going to make, I like to get them out of the way first. So the PRV is here. I'm going to relocate the PRV. I'm going to put the PRV exactly where it's going to come. So it's just going to come straight through there. As long as the stack's not there behind it, then that should be all right. I'll put the PRV right here. Or you can always go down here in the back here. Or you could always go this way as well and put it here so prv there condense will go straight down through the wall here somewhere maybe could even go here to be fair 32 inch and a quarter coming out through there that should be all right uh, because the last one was there so as long as it's higher i'll then still have that fall to that stack on that side so that's fine so i'll get that out of the way now so i'll get my the core drill inside done and i'll get the the prv side done as well and then i can figure out what i'm going to do pipe with gas ain't too bad i think i can just pull that across there that would line up with this one here um hot and cold yeah hot that's cold actually and i believe this is hot so that's going to be moved around that can be extended up to here anyway i'll figure it out i don't like to spend i do like spending time planning it but not too much so I'm going to chop these out first now, just so I know where everything's going. So the gas is going to get chopped out anyway, because it's going to get extended. So get the slice. Because you've got the 22 slice on yours, ain't you? change of plan now I'm gonna put the clips in place where they need to be so to figure out to make sure these pipes are straight nice and straight I'm gonna use this template this template will tell me 
straighten it up. Yeah, this template will tell me where my clips are gonna go. Yeah. If I put that there, so I'm just lining these ends up here. You can't see it down there, can you? So if you look up here, so if you look up here, I've lined this up here and I've lined that one up there. Now it should be bang on to where it should be. So let's mark the holes. There's one line there, one line there, and then my condense will be here. Gas, PRV, it's telling me it's going to be right here somewhere. And then flow, I mean return. So I've got my centre lines now, yeah? So I know my clip's going to be down here. So another thing I need to figure out is where to start the clips from. So we'll always get this on there. And then I know now I'm going to solder a coupler basically here. Yeah? So I want my clips to roughly start. So I don't want to burn the clips either when I'm soldering that. So if my clips start, say, here. So if my line of clips is there, then I've missed this as well. So I don't need to worry about, you know, not getting a good fixing. So that root there is fine. So I'm going to have one line of clips there. I'll probably have another line of clips maybe in here. But yeah, so I've done the, that, that's, that's the basics. So the basic is figuring out where the line is going down. Yeah. And then uh, I'll figure that out. The second, the other thing is the condense. So I know the condense is going to go straight here. I'm going to cord drill probably roughly around here somewhere, maybe anywhere along this line here. PRV, I'll put that on and I'll line that one up as well. So just put the tappers in. What bit do you use? Show these guys what bit you use because I've always been asked that question. I've used. So this is a PH2. Can't see it, but it's a PH2 Herboa. So I think you get this from Screwfix, yeah? PH2 Herboa. And then that just went straight in. So we've got the sour tappers in there and there. We're going to do the longer ones after. So Curtis has done the flu. I think it's patched. Have you patched the outside, yeah? The outside has been patched. If you can see, the stack's been moved out of the way now. He's got the strap-on boss connection there, ready now. So what I've got to do is as I've done the clips, the clips are in now, so I know the root of my pipe work. You know, I was thinking of this pipe to pull the carpets back and move the pipe there under the floor but I haven't got time um, I've got to get quite a bit done today short amount of time and again you don't get paid for doing these things making it nice if I've just done it normally I would have got paid the same job but I'm just doing it just I like to do a good job um, so I'm just trying to do everything above ground if, if I wanted to make it look nice I would have moved that under there and then uh, did that but again like I ain't got enough time so that's sorted so now I'm going to drill my PRV hole right here, and I'm going to drill my condents here outside my core, and then Curtis will core it outside in, just so I can get on with what I'm doing here. So I've plugged that with the, the things that Baxi give, and I've turned this one off. So no, no shit should get in there, so let's pilot my PRV. Now it's time to start the soldering and basically start fitting the pipes. So whenever I fit these boilers, I always start with the flow or the PRV. In this instance, I'm just going to start with the flow. Curtis has just done the core, so we can see a hole right here. So we've done the core, we 
we've done the core in 40 mil. Um, the reason we've done it in 40 mil instead of what should it have been 32 is so we can get that coupler in the actual wall. So you're just going to come down here, overflow with 21.5, 21.5, and just into the wall. And then into the wall is where you're going to have the coupler instead of bringing the 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 elbow out and stuff like that. So that's why we've gone bigger. So yeah, it's going to get this on, get your washers on there. I've already flocked this up, so this is ready to get on there. Part of this up. Now this is another thing that I do guys, yeah? Which you might not be aware of, but I've got this inspection mirror, which I use. This one here. Get off eBay or whatever, yeah? Now you check around the back, see if the solder's ran. So I've got the flow pipe in place. I managed to just desolder it and get it into place. Now I'm gonna get the one next to it, which is gonna be the hot pipe. So the hot pipe is this pipe here. And I'm going to do it and try to do it all in one bend. So it's going to go from there, bend up, bend across, and bend across up here. The only issue you may have is this bend here. It may be too tight of a radius to get it. I don't, it may not sit into this clip, which I don't mind anyway. Um, and I think this here, it's only about 10 centimeters here. So that may be an issue, but we'll try it. Let me see how it goes. Pipe, which is this one here which is going to go all the way up to here. So that's going to be, say, 13.5. But should be, say, 36, 9.5, say, 32. So I've got my measurements there of what I want. Pipe's going to go across the bottom. It's going to bend up. Then it's going to bend across here and then it's going to bend up yeah so that's how i want it then let's say okay so it's going to be a meter so instead of bending it in a three meter which is going to be a lot harder for me i'm going to cut it just over a meter 13.5 first bend 13.5 that's sorted. 13.5. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's get that. Okay, so that's the first 90. Done. 36. So well, this hasn't moved. That hasn't moved. Let's bend this one. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. That's like further along and it won't go in you can see that the line is down here and I need the line to be here and that's literally pushed as far in as it can go but that's I'll show you where it needs to be so it needs to be even more than that oh yeah so it needs to be about there and if I got this in, my former, you see what I mean? This, it can't catch on to anything. It has to be sitting on a flat pipe, so that won't work. So I'm just going to leave this one. There's two bends. Cut it where I need to cut it, and then just solder it straight up. Okay, so I've got the hot pipe in now. I've got to do the gas. Gas is going to come across here, up, across here, and up. What I should have done, really, was I should have took this hot pipe across here and up here instead, and then went along. Because it would have been easier just to bring this gas pipe all the way straight down, and then kick over it and back into here. It would have been easier. So it would have been easier if this pipe was here. 
it is what it is. I've done that now. Now I've just got to kick that one out. I don't know what it's called. Set or something. You go over there. Back down. Which is a lot of crossover, I think. Yeah, uh, whatever it's called. Cross here. And uh, into there. Which is a lot harder now. trick for you guys yeah it's not going on the fitting now and if you can tap but it's slightly deformed it's not a circle anymore yeah it's like a slight oval shape so one way to sort that is to get your spanner and just turn it around like that get it tight on it and just turn it around keep going around What I will do, I get it back into a circle. Hopefully, with a bismillah, it will go on. So because we're power flushing now, we're going to flush the system with a magnet lens. I need to get this system on as fast as I can within an hour. So what I do, I carry this plug with me, with these wires. So all I literally want to do is get the heating on as fast as I can, and then I can do the rest, sorry for this, and then I can do the rest after. So fitting the thermostat and stuff like that, I can do that after. I can do that while I'm waiting for the chemical to flush around the system. So I've got to give the chemical at least an hour to run around the whole system and to break down all that sludge and crap in the system before we can physically start flushing the system. So I've just got to privatise getting the system on right now. This is why I keep this um, this little wire with me. Once I've finished with it, I'll take it back off and then I'll wire it up with a five core thermostat into the plug. So yeah, a little tip, tip trick of the trade there, guys. This is, it's all about speed. If you want to get home and you want to finish the job, you want to go home. You don't want to spend longer than necessary on the job. And this is what speeds you up. So we'll do that, put that there. And now that can literally just be plugged in. So that took me, what, less than a minute to do that? Okay, so we're going to connect this um, AD Magna Cleanse flushing machine. I've had this for a while now, it's a really good piece of kit. It's, it, instead of me carrying around my camco and stuff like that, I just carry this one around. Um, so Curtis has already set it up. So when you do set it up, um, you've got to make sure you drain off bits on the bottom. I'll explain this in a bit anyway. Um, so Curtis is going to connect it up to the actual uh, system. So he's literally just going to connect it straight to the magnets. I've already opened up these isolation valves. I've opened them just to make it easier. And what he's going to do, yeah, he's already whacked a bit of lube in there, just to make it easier to go on and off. Um, do it the other way, guys. Do that, yeah, turn that. Uh -huh. No, turn it. Oh, to that. Yeah. 
It's easier. So the bottom one is. Can you close it? Close. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's the other way around. Does it fit? It's a bit. It's a bit harder on these. Uh, smaller. No, no, no. You know what? You f you forgot the back thing. So take the whole thing back off. So what Curtis forgot there? This is why it's harder for him to take it off. And it would have been even harder when there's when there's water in the pipe work. Yeah. So what he forgot was this. on the back of the filter you have this thing here. So you always put that on it first. It just makes life a lot easier when you're removing it, yeah? This little gadget here. Even on the Magna Cream Pro 2s, if you're gonna do it on them, it's the same thing. They have that guide thing, make sure you've got it on. Push it for the water to go from the boiler to the system, back up through this bottom hose, yeah? And then through the bottom hose, and it's meant to go through the bottom first and not the top. So he's just basically done it the one way around. So you've got to switch these cutties. Switch yeah, switch them the other way around. No, no, not that. Yeah, yeah I'll turn it around. Yeah, turn it around to see if it's easier. Just yeah, flip it around like that. So we've connected it up now. So you've got to remember when you're connecting these up, imagine the boiler heats the water up, it goes back down into the system back up the return pipe, through the bottom of this, through this bottom hose, into the magnet, one magnet, into the second magnet, and then back into the boiler to be reheated, yeah? So these big magnets are catching anything before they go back into the system. Very important. Make sure these are open, make sure these ain't going anywhere, they're closed, your little uh, clips are, are all tight and stuff like that. Um, these are closed at the minute and we're going to add the chemical straight into here. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the chemical straight into here. It's the easiest way to do it. Now what I'm going to do, we're going to go around and we're going to close all the vents on the rads. And then, I'll beat it as well. then another thing we're going to do is where we drain the radiator down there, he's going to check the washer on there and he's going to change it. So whenever we touch any drain offs, I always take that little rubber bit off inside the drain off and always change it. Because you don't want to fill the system up and it's leaking from a bloody drain off. It's not worth the headache. So we've already got one, two rads up here and that's it. The wild Curtis is downstairs closing the bead vents and um, sorting that washer out. I'll show you what cleaner I use. This is the one that I use, MC5 Rapid Flush. I've got the MC, I think it's three as well, but I, I don't think I ever use that one. Even if I'm doing light flushing, I always use MC5. It's it's more it's more powerful, uh, so it just does a better job. You can't leave this in the system longer than an hour, uh, 30 days, I believe it is. So sometimes if the system's really dirty, or if I haven't got a lot of time, what I'll do, I will um, put this in the system, um, and then come back after a week, two, three weeks, and then flush the system, because it's had more time to break down the crap in the system so here's the oh yeah so here's the washer that we've just taken out look how squished it is that's why we always change it with a new one like this so we've gone around bled the rads pressure's on about 1.5 one bar let's vent these now Plugs in, 313. Pump's already doing its thing. Make sure the auto air vent's open. Yep. Let's switch it on. It's one, two. You've got to wait seven minutes for this now, yeah? Let it circulate around the system and stuff like that. When I was on the back course, they said that they can check if you've done this. Um, and if the boiler breaks down and stuff like that, they want you to do things. Okay, oh yeah, also, you've got to make sure you fill this trap up with water. Baxi want you to do it. So, I forgot to show you. You've got to basically put water in the top of here and fill it up. Baxi want you to do that. Something to do with the heat exchanger getting too warm. 
Um, if you don't want to do it that way, before you do the flu, he said put a, uh, a Coke, Coke bottle, I don't know if he meant, it's probably a small Coke bottle, 750ml or whatever, it's 500ml, uh, down the middle of this flu, yeah? Um, so it fills this trap up. That's something Baxi want you to do before fix, fit, fitting these borders. I went on their training course recently and uh, that's what the guy told us to do. So yeah, do that guys. So the deaeration is done, now we're just going to whack it into the maximum mode. So it's already calling for heat, the, 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 the central heating is on, the boiler wants the heating on because I've left that link in. Because I've left this little yellow link in, it's calling for heat, which is good. I just want to whack it into maximum now. So the way to whack it into maximum is this one, one, two, it will stay on. Three, four, 75. We're going to take it all the way to 100. So now the boiler is now in maximum. I'm going to go check the inlet pressure downstairs to make sure that we're all right with this 15 mil. We're going to do a gas rate now as well. So at the meter, we're getting 21 millibar. So we want at least 20 millibar at the, the boiler. While I'm here, I'm going to do a gas rate as well, yeah? So the gas rate, the way I do it, the easiest way is to actually use the back C tool bar out. Type in tool. Not sure if you can see that. Let me try something to make it easier for you guys to see. Um, if I take the brightness down, you can see it better. Okay, so that's fine. So if you go in here, if you go to gas flow rate, and you can see it right there. So I can go to Imperial, and then I can go to Start, so I can figure out when I'm gonna start it. So I'm gonna start it. I'll start it when it gets to, okay, system might time out, so I don't wanna wait too long. I'm gonna start it when it gets to one, it's the easiest thing to do. So when it gets to one, there. So I've started it there. And what's gonna what's gonna happen is when it reaches back to one, I then press stop and I press get result and it will tell me what the flow rate is at the boiler. So I'm just doing the gas rate and then I'm also gonna check the inlet upstairs as well. I'm gonna take this upstairs with me and make sure it's 20 millibar upstairs, yeah. So it's getting closer to the time to stop it. Okay, let's get ready. Finger on the trigger. Done. Get result. So the kilowatt should be 25. Can you see that? 25.81, which is bang on. That's the Baxi 825. The gas rate's fine. Don't only do an inlet, guys. Always do the the gas rate as well. So I've done my inlet, guys. My inlet's at 20 millibar, so this is all okay now. So the 22 is literally just behind here. So behind that gas, behind this wall, there's a bath, and behind that bath, there's a 22 mil pipe, and then it's 15, literally, just up here. Now I could have, uh, you know, chopped it there and got 22 coming up here. But you still would have had, you still would have seen a bit of 22 there. Customer don't want me to touch his bath panel, obviously because he's an old guy. He doesn't want more work. And I said to him, look, let's test this first. If it's all right when I test it, I won't touch it. But if I need to, then I would. So this proves to show you don't always need to upgrade the whole run all the way to 22. You can leave it uh, at 15, depending on how long the 15 is, the bends, and it depends on the size of the boiler as well. This is only a 25 kilowatt boiler. So you can get away with it. You can check this guys in the back C tool bar out. Just so you know, in the back C tool bar out, tool belt app, you can um, check gas pipe sizing and stuff like that. So even if you don't fit back C's, your Valent guy, your Worcester guy, whatever, it's the easiest way in my opinion to do your pipe sizing and stuff like that. You can check, okay, is three meters gonna be okay, 50 mil for 35 kilowatts or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, I know this is fine. I've done my gas rate, I've driven my inlet, uh, they were both bang on so there's no issues there. Now what we're doing is we're flushing the system out 
as you can see that the magnets have been connected everything's been connected but whilst this is happening now i'm going to make use of that this time and i'm going to you know connect the thermostat on the wall and stuff like that because there's still things to do and then i'll keep you posted on how you actually um flush the system So we've started the actual flushing of the, the system now um, as it's been an hour, it's been just over an hour, so we're ready to start. In that, in that time you've seen what we did, we basically cleaned the area up. I've got the holes there for my thermostat, I'm going to put my thermostat there. Combi pack 4 is what I'm going to fit, uh, EPH combi pack 4, really easy to fit, live neutral, and then uh, 2 and 3 which is my switches. It's going to go into a plug, it was in a plug before. Advise the customer to get a few spur, get electrician to fit a few spur. So that's done. Let me guys, let me talk you through, guys through this and what we do now, because a few people have been asking me what happens next. So, so the hour has gone, and we're now ready to fish some. Curtis has in fact started fishing the system downstairs. We've obviously hoovered up down here and stuff like that. Um, it's Ramadan by the way, so I'm fasting. So uh, I just did my prayer and then my second prayer as well. Just done that. Um, whilst this one hour period was going on and stuff like that and I uh, had to get f back to a few phone calls as you do running a business um, so I didn't actually manage to get a lot of work done as per se I've done other things um, but anyway regardless of that um, the way it works now is you go to each radiator and you have basically got to switch every single radiator off except for one the last radiator on the circuit yeah so you go to every single radiator and turn it off but don't just go turn it off straight away uh, look at the lock shield and record how many times it takes to turn the lock shield off So if it's five turns to turn the lock shield off one two three four five Write down a piece of paper put it in right next to the radiator and you do that to every single radiator bar the last one on the circuit Yeah, so the one furthest away from the radiator and you leave that one on and then you start agitating that one Yeah, you start agitating that one once you've agitated that one for a good couple of minutes you look at this hose here so you start looking at the hose and you see how dirty the hose gets. Yeah, as you can see, they're it's really black. Yeah, uh, they're really black. The hoses are really black. It shows that obviously it's working. Uh, it's going, we're getting the crap out of the system. Once we've done the last rad, so we say we worked on it a couple of minutes and we've agitated it. Then we turn that rad back off completely and we go to the next rad on the circuit and open that one up completely. Yeah, so then you do this to every single rad. You agitate that one. Then you close that rad, go to the next rad, open that one up completely. Agitate that rad, go to the next rad, open that one up completely. Until you've gone to the last radiator, you, the closest one to the circuit, which obviously would be this one behind me, until you've got to this one. When you get to this one, you do the same thing. You, you start agitating it, and I'll show you that when Curtis comes up here, I'll show you him agitating the radiators and how it looks. Once you've then agitated the system, uh, and you, you've agitated all the radiators, this one's been agitated and they're all done, then you're ready then to cold flush the system. And it's the exact same thing we do with the cold flush. You turn this radiator back off, you go back to that first radiator you were back on, open the valves and start flushing. Start opening up the filling loop on the boiler. There's a drain off on here. So that drain off on here, you open this drain off, you close these, I'll show you how to do it when we're doing it. Um, you open that one up, and you start flushing all the cold water out of the system on that one radiator. When that radiator is clean, you know it's clean because you're going to be looking at the water coming out of the hose. Put a magnet on it if you want. You know it's clean. Close that radiator off and go to the next one. Flush that one, cold flush. Now, cold flushing, in my opinion, takes longer than actually agitating the system because it takes a long time to get a lot of the stuff out. And in my opinion, cold flushing is underestimated. I don't think people cold flush as long as they should. Yeah, uh, I don't think people use a magnet. I think that's the issue with the, uh, with the cold flushing. So cold flushing should take you longer than actually agitating the system. And then uh, once you've done the, the whole thing, go to the next rad, go to the next rad, go to the next rad. Bear in mind, you're doing one rad at a time. You're taking every single rad off once you've done it. Yeah, so now you come to the last radiator, which is here. You're cold flushing this radiator and it's done. Now imagine we've done the whole thing and the, the cold flushing, the, the flushing is all done. This is where you then need to go back, switch the boiler off. Obviously the boiler's off anyway because when you're cold flushing. Um, 
you go back to the first radiator and this is where you start balancing going back again this is why you recorded how many turns it took to take the lock shield off you go back to that, that first rad and I guess it's five on that sheet open it up five turns go to the next one open that up reset them to what they were basically every single radio rebalance the radiators go around and reset them to what they were and then you shouldn't have to waste a good two, three hours going around trying to balance the radiators. You leave it to how it was, and then they should work. You shouldn't have any issues with it. Now, I hope you guys understood that. If you didn't, let me know. I'll try to make a video specifically to this. But whilst we're here doing it on this, I thought I'd explain the process to you. Um, I hope you understood it. And when Curtis comes upstairs now, um, doing this radiator, I'll show you what it's like cold flushing and you can see that the I mean the agitating and you'll see the the cold flushing aspect There's Curtis. So whenever he's power flushing, he now brings his shorts Yeah, he's just sweating. Let's have a look sweat. He's got the sweat on mate. He's got the sweat. So power flush is not easy. It's not an easy job. It's a two-man job uh, I've done it before on my own, but it, it, it kills you. So it's better to do it on uh, with two men so yeah, he's got his shorts on because of the fact that it gets really hot. He's got to run around. He's got to do a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, so we're just waiting now. He's, this is the second to last radiator that he's going to agitate. Then he's going to do the last red. Okay, so now Curtis has moved on to the last radiator. So he's opening the, the lock shield completely open on this one. And once he's opened that one completely, he'll open the TRV completely bear in mind he's just done the radiator behind us yeah so this is the last one on the circuit the room that i'm working on so it's the closest one to the boiler the boiler's over there this is where we're working yeah and he's also opened this one up so now he's opened this one up that one should be getting warmer now he's closing this one he's closing this one and this is being closed now, Curtis has been doing this so long, he doesn't write them papers here sometimes. Only on big systems, he'll write down. He now remembers how many turns it took to basically close this. So he doesn't write it down. So when he resets it right at the end, he'll know what to put it back onto. Yes, but for the time being, he's turned that back off. So every single radiator is turned off, except for one. Now you're going to see what the agitating is about and why he wears these uh, muffs. I haven't got any on. Because the customer's got mine, but uh, listen to this. See that? That was, that's a mission. That is not easy, yeah. So he's done that on every single radiator. Now, if you notice, he what he was doing because the flow is coming from there. He's going in that direction. If that was the flow pipe, he'd be going in that direction. Yeah, so but he was going in that right direction to aid it, to aid the breakdown, and it goes straight straight through here. The lock shield, as you can see, is fully open. The TRV is fully open. The the rad, I don't know if you can hear it. You can the water's flowing really fastly through it because it's the only radiator in the circuit which is on. You can see how dirty the rain the, the water is. It's all coming out of there. So them, so they're gonna be really black. So yeah, so this is the last one. Now he's done the agitating, he's going to leave it for a good couple of minutes because it's still water still going through it. Yeah, so it's still grabbing the crap, taking it from the radiator into the magnets over here. So he's done that to every single radiator now. Now because he's done that to the last rad, after a while, after a couple of minutes, he's going to turn this radiator off, go back to downstairs to the first radiator, turn that one fully open, and then we're going to cold flush the system. So what I'm going to do with that one is just switch these off. Well, you're going to see what we're going to do with that anyway, after this. Right. So now the flushing aspect is done. We've took the boiler off. Boiler's now been taken off. Curtis is going to turn this rad off. This rad's off. That rad's off. He's going to go back to his first rad now. Open that completely up. And we're going to start cold flushing that. Once we're happy with the cold flush, then what he's going to do is... Uh, keep one side closed, the flow, which should be the TRV. He's going to close the TRV on that on that one rad once the cold flush is done. And he's going to reset that TRV, no, the lock shield. He's going to reset that lock shield to what it was. So if it was fully open or five turns, he's going to leave that five turns. He's going to close the TRV, move on from that one, 
to the next one that we're going to cold flush open that completely cold flush that one close the trv reset the lock shield third one open that one completely once that's done lock shield close the lock shield and uh, reset the trv uh, lock shield if i got jibber jabber there whatever i got jibber jabbered so you understand how it is until he gets back to this one here until we have cold flush in this one and then once we're completely done and with the cold flushing is completely done we then go around open all the lock shields up i mean the trvs don't open the lock shields because then obviously you're gonna unbalance the system's gonna get unbalanced and all that's gonna be useless you just go around open the trvs or the flow pipes uh, which you've which you've left closed so at the end of it once your cold flushing is done one side should be balanced so your lock shield side should be back to what you should be and the flow side should be closed once you once you've finished the, the cold flush um, because that's how you should have left it and then once the cold flush is completely finished you then open the flow completely the flow is 100 percent open and the lock shield side the return is you know balanced I've never seen one to balance that. That is bad. That is bad. Is that one of the worst you've seen? That's the other magnet as well. That's one of the worst, mate. And that is quite a lot as well. It's ribbed. Get that on the photo. <laughs> get that on the video. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about it? You think one can get that many years out of that boiler? Yeah? yeah, you did. You got 27 or something years out of that. 1999, weren't it? 98 was burned. Yeah. Yes. If it is, it's not, not as bad as you say. Uh, so as you've seen, magnets are really dirty. There's a lot of sludge. Apparently it's not been drained for the last 20 odd years or something. So we've done well. We've got a good amount of sludge out of there. But still, we've still got quite a lot to get out uh, in regards to the cold flush. So what I've done, I've took the top one off. Because what we want to do now, is we want to start cold flushing so we don't want the cold water to, to open and to go down the return and to basically just come out of this pipe here we don't want that to happen so we close the top so that doesn't happen but what we do we open the bottom i've i closed that just just to show you guys that that's what you want to do you want to open the bottom and close the top yeah so the top's closed the bottom's open so theoretically i can get rid of the top hose now because it's not connected to anything as you can see it's out the window now i've used this so many times these drain offs have started leaking now for my on my one a do you need to sort that out well it's probably because i've used it you know loads of times and it's wore out so what i always try to do is i try to keep this outside now so if it does drip you know it drips outside opposed to inside even though i've got plumb tubs and I've got these things here. I want it to drip out so it's less mess. So what I'm going to do is put a hose onto here and it's going to go straight into like a gutter down there. So then we cold flush straight into the gutter until it's clear. The first rad's completely open. Yeah. So all the other rads are now closed. The first rad is open. We've disconnected it here just to show you that nothing's going to come out of this side now. So there's nothing actually connected to it. The hose that was connected is now there. So now what, we're going to, what we want to happen is water to open from here, go into the boiler, through the flow, through that one radiator, back up this pipe here, out here, and then through this hose outside. So we're basically dumping all the water, yeah? And we want to basically open up the cold now. So um, we threw that black... There, there, have you got the, something to hold this open, Lucas? That one. So we'll get this now. Put that there to allow the pressure in and we'll basically open this drain off now and start dumping all the crap out. Let's go downstairs and have a look so I can show you guys how dirty it is. This is the issue with it, it drips slightly. You can see how dirty this is. The magnet has caught a lot of crap 
that it doesn't fully clean the rads. This is why this is vital, yeah? See how dirty it is, yeah? And we need to do this to every single radiator until it comes out clear. This is why flushing is very important uh, to keep the warranty and stuff. And when you're doing this guys, yeah, try not doing it in baths or sinks or stuff like that because you could easily block it up. Um, ideally you want to be doing it outside into a drain. If you haven't got no other alternative, then it is what it is. But um, you ideally want to be doing it outside the way we've done it. So while this is happening, we've also got a magnet that we keep with us. And we use this, so once it runs clear, we'll use this magnet to see if it is actually really clear. But just because it's clear and it looks clean doesn't actually mean it's clean, yeah? So we'll let that go, let that do what it's got to do. And uh, we'll have a look at Curtis's work that he's doing out here. So you can see you've got the pipe going in there, through there. That does need to be uh, insulated. So we are going to come back and we're going to insulate that, uh, the condens pipe. PRV's being moved. And now you can see there's no issue with the flue now. Yeah, because we've got that distance, the 150 mil away. We moved that stack, uh, the soil pipe out of the way, and we're clear of the, the window. So that's fine now. Let's go back to this and see. See, it's still coming out really dirty. This is what I mean, guys. So this cold friction now will take a long time. You can tell on this rad, we're going to be here for a long time with this cold friction. Chilling out. Cold flushing. So, whilst we're cold flushing and it's chilling down there, um, I'll talk you through this. So, on the thermostats, it's really easy. I've got other videos on it, but anyway, neutral, live, switch, and on. Basically, really easy. And then you've got your your earth. So it doesn't need an earth. This earth is for the boiler, because I've gone three core. I've gone plug straight into here and then from here it will go into the boiler so the water is now coming out clear it's been about what 10 15 minutes it's coming out clear so what we're going to do we're running it through a magnet to see if, if it catches anything if it does then we know that it's still quite dirty if it doesn't then we're happy and we move on And to be fair, it's not it's not that it's not that bad anymore. If it was, you'd see little particles getting stuck to it, and then I'd carry on flushing. Like these little particles at the bottom here. Yeah. So this looks all right. So we can move on now from here to the next rad. We'll show you how Curtis is going to do it. Hey, which radiator was it? Hey, is this the one that's open? No, this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. So this is the radiator which is completely open. This one is the one that's actually been flushed. So he's not touching that, he's leaving that completely open. He's now opening this radiator and opening this one completely. Yeah, that's completely open. And then, because that's now completely open, he's now going to close. He's going to close this radiator, and he's going to reset that one to what it was. How many turns was that closed? Fifteen open. Fifteen open. So he's going to reset to that to what it is. So that one's now fully clean. We're now currently cleaning this one right now. Yeah. So let's go outside. And have a look how dirty this one is. Yeah. Again, so we're just going to wait now. We're going to repeat this process to all the radiators until every single radiator comes out clean. Once they're clean, we're done.
So let's let's just talk about balancing the system. If, for example, Kurt has turned off all the TRVs and he forgot, let's just say you forgot which ones they were, we then have to figure out which radiator is the last on the circuit. And it would be the ones downstairs because the boiler is upstairs. That one that we were working on would have been right here. That's the first one on the circuit. So that one there would literally just need to be a quarter to turn open, literally. And that would work fine. Whereas, because these are on the last circuit, you couldn't quarter turn these. The return pipe would have to be near enough, you know, a lot more open than that one. Quarter turns, so maybe four or five turns on these. So what we'd have to do is find out the drop. And here's a drop here. So it looks like you've got the boiler feeding one rad there, feeding another rad in that room there, going across, down the drop, feeding that rad, feeding that rad, and feeding that rad. That rad is the last rad on the circuit because it's the furthest away. So what I would do is that return pipe, that lock shield would be fully open, completely open. That one would be completely open and maybe one turn close. Close that one. I mean, you know, literally one turn. Let's close that one turn. And then this one here would be maybe two turns closed. Yeah? You could, you could potentially even get away with leaving that fully open, that fully open, and that fully open because it's just a small system. This one has got two lock shields. So every, every radiator in the house, you need one radiator in the house to have two lock shields class is a bypass so they can't be turned off um, and on this one what you'd have to do is find out which one the flow is and find out which one the return is so the flow imagine this was the flow you'd open that one completely up that would be completely open and it's the return pipe is the one that you would close so that's the one that you would balance basically the easiest way to find out is when you turn the heating on which one gets hot first if that gets hot first and that's the flow so the flow is always completely open and then it's the return is the one that you balance and then once i've say i've balanced one two three i'd go upstairs to that one and you know maybe close that completely and open it a, a turn go to that one close that completely and open it a quarter turn or something like that you know and then you'll just see if it works so let's see what the system is like now so now this system is clean. It's checking it on the magnet. It looks all good. So it's going to move on now to the next radiator and flush that one. boys line wired up just a few clips makes a massive difference just makes it look nice i never used to do it but seeing a few other people do it i thought why not clip it up and uh, it's been wired now so live neutral earth and the two thermostat wires yeah sorted if you wanted to put uh, like a nest or something into it an open therm you'd use these and the boiler would become a lot more efficient but this is the elderly guy he just wants something that does the job so that's done now. We're still cold flushing the system um, and I've got about half an hour, 45 minutes up until I open my fast. So we're just trying to wrap things up now. I'm just going to commission the boiler and uh, hopefully get out of it. So we're going to whack this magnet back on. Make sure that's fully in. Inhibitor, we're going to whack the inhibitor in here now as well. No tools needed when you're closing this, literally, hand tight. This is the only issue with these magnets, it's all wonky and stuff like that. 
it just happens. Um, let's put this UPH thing back on. That's back on. Boiler's on now. That should be wired up. We've got our thingies open there. I can refill the system. Flashing E118 because there's no water in the system. Let's fill this back up. So we've done the job now, guys. Bit rushed on the ending because I've got a fast to open in about 10, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Been fasting all day, no food, no water. And I uh, just want to open the fast. I'm quite hungry. Um, I'm going to come back another day just to like patch these holes up and stuff like that. But yeah, overall, we've flushed it, commissioned it. We've got no issues. Hope you guys learned something here. I'll uh, put the camera back on in the van and I'll speak to you guys into the van. So this is the Baxi 800, 10 years parts and labor warranty. Like I said, I always try to do the best job I can with the piping up. There's a few things I would have done a bit differently, like moved a few pipes and stuff like that, but hey ho, the job's done, customer's happy, I'm happy. And we got over the back by moving that out of the way. So now that's fine. Uh, we're just gonna come back here and uh, put a bit of insulation on this and we're happy with that. So we've finished that job now, guys. Come to the end of the job and uh, finished it. We're still gonna go back there because um, we've still got a few things to do, just like patch up the little bit of holes in the thingy. Um, Curtis is gonna clean the pipes up because he likes doing that. Um, and uh, just make sure everything's all right. Let the customer's happy with everything. Um, we prefer to go back on a second visit. So once we've done a job like this, a combi or something like that, we like to go on a second visit just to make sure everything's all right. We're not one of them guys that just goes in there, slaps a combi and you never see us again. You know what I mean? Um, we, like, we like the customer to understand everything. And we were a bit rushed um, to get out because I'm going to open my fast literally in about three or four minutes. So we were a bit rushed and we had to leave. So we took all the tools out, we finished, everything's working, the flush, everything's done. So we don't physically need to do anything. It's just, just making good, um, as they would say, yeah, making good. So yeah, um, this video, the customer wanted a uh, new boiler they've watched our videos they know they know uh, about the backseas they said you know what, i want a backseat 800 so i didn't have to even tell them what to fit they just told me that listen i want a backseat i was all right that's fine that works good with me when i got in there i didn't notice that gas pipe was too small uh, but i did put it forth to him and i said to him look i'd prefer to upgrade it but he said i didn't want to take his back panel off and you know he's an old guy and who am i going to find to put the back panel back on because i wasn't going to do it i haven't got time to fit back panels in I hate doing stuff like that. Um, so I said to him, if it needs to be done, I'll do it. If I don't need to do it, then I won't do it. So I basically gave him a deal like that. And he said, that, yeah, that was fine. And uh, yeah, so when I've tested in the end, it was fine. The gas rate was fine, bang on. And the, the inlet, we had a one millibar drop, which is permissible. So uh, we're happy with that. No issues there with that. The other issue we had, like you said, with the soil pipe, uh, too close to the boiler. We moved that just further along. That was nice and easy. Curtis did that. Um, condense, it was too small. So we've upgraded that. Nice and easy. Curtis did that while he was up there doing that. He even core drilled outside on the ladder. Now that ain't really easy. Let me tell you that. It takes a bit of skill. It takes a bit of gut strength. Um, but yeah, he did that. And that was a good job done. And then yeah, I ran around flushing the radiators. I've tried to explain the flushing the rads. I hope you understand it now. Um, it's, it's not that hard to be fair guys, once you've done once, one or two, then um, you, you, you know it in the back of your head type of thing, it's not that hard. And this was quite a small system but it was dirty, it needed that flush. That's why I'm not that guy that just comes in and gives you a price just to change your combi. I always advise, okay my fast is open guys, give us one sec. So that's the first sip of water I've had today. Long job, but it's doable. Um, yeah, so um, what was I saying, Curtis? Nah, we went past the cord really, thing. Um, anyway, it was a good job. Um, like I said, the flushing was done. The system was really dirty. 
they had an old Vicera boiler in there and that boiler had been in there for I think 27 years I think they said I can't remember and it was going strong um, something happened to the boiler it broke down and the guy was like enough enough I just want a new boiler now um, PRV had been dripping for how long system was filthy but you know it, it carried on going um, they don't make boilers like that anymore unfortunately but yeah um, these Vicera's the old ones are really good I don't know about these newer ones um, I don't really fit Vicarious. Don't really. My merchants don't really sell them, so I don't really fit them. But um, the old ones are really good. From what I believe, it was Valent who were like the, 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 who started the game off. They come in and slapped a combi in and stuff like that. And then Vicera come after them straight away um, and kind of copied them. Tried copying them with the V and stuff like that. I don't know. This is what I've heard. And then um, and then uh, I think somebody, I think Valent maybe changed the pipe alterations because this, this, this was the old pipe alteration. If you, if you think that the flow return um, gas and then it had hot and then cold. Yeah, so it was, it was all mumbly jumbly all over the shop. Tried my best to kind of sort it out. If you notice, I cut it back, clipped it nicely and got it looking nice. Like I, said, I could have went that extra mile. Some plumbers out there on YouTube may have put the floorboard up and moved the pipes all over the place, got them all neat nice tonight, but I don't get paid for that. Even if I didn't make it neat, the guys would have still paid me. It, 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 was, it, was, it made no difference if it was neat or no, they, they didn't care. I just did it for my own sanity. You know, I like to do a good job, so I did it. Um, and I think it looked good. Some things I would have done differently, but you know, you take that as improvement and there's always room for improvement. Um, I added that drain off in at the end as well. I put the drain off in I always like to add a drain up here and there, just in case some other guy comes down in the future and he wants to drain the boiler. The one on the boiler is knackered and you can do that one. It just makes life easier, doesn't it? Um, just have a second drain off. I don't think there's no issue with that. Um, yeah, so it was a good job. Job well done. I hope you guys learned something. Doing a combi is not easy. I always do it with Curtis. It's always, I advise people do it as a two-man job. Um, if you guys, do it on your own, fair play to you. When I first started, I used to do it on my own. So I even used to flush and everything on my own. But it, it, it was hard work. I was knackered on the end of it. I used to get headaches and stuff like that. Left, centre, right, always getting headaches. And that was why you just overworked. The money was good, but it's not worth it. Um, you, you got to put your half before wow. But yeah, I hope you guys learned something new here. And that's it. We'll come to the end of the video. Job done. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.